Fox News alert, Israel launching a targeted strike against Hezbollah in Beirut, killing 14. The IDF confirmed the strike killed a top Hezbollah commander that the U.S. says was behind the 1983 Beirut barracks bombings that killed more than 200 Americans. Here to react, Fox News contributor and former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Mr. Secretary, thank you for being here. First off, the, these uh, the, you have the pager uh, uh, attacks, then you had the radios, now you have this. How much of, the, do you think they were able to get surveillance or GPS locations from those pagers as well, and now they're able to hone in on remaining Hezbollah commanders? How, what do you make of how this is all unfolding? Pete, good morning. It's great to be with you. Um, it's certainly a demonstration of really good intelligence work. Years and years of effort would have had to have gone into this to, to identify these things at the apparently very granular level than they have been able to identify them. And what it's allowed them to do is impose real costs on Hezbollah, its senior leadership now, the second major strike, and then do this in a way that minimizes civilian casualties. This is excellence in operations. Yeah. And I'm guessing that the Israelis continue to know more and will be able to continue to put pressure on Hezbollah so they can protect their own nation. How devastating has this been for Hezbollah? Are they still operational? Um, I mean, can you give us a sense of that? And then also, does it make a wider war more likely or less likely? Have they reestablished some level of deterrence, Israel? Peter, my guess is that Hezbollah is still pretty capable, still has uh, hundreds and hundreds of precision guide munitions that could uh, attempt to be launched into Israel. I know the Israelis have taken out many mo uh, rocket launch sites and will probably continue to go after them, but, but the threat remains uh, because it's not just Hezbollah, it's not just Hamas, it's not just the Houthis. In the end, it's the Iranians that will continue to underwrite and fund them and help them rebuild, even in the face of Israeli excellence. You know, as for escalation, I, I was so disturbed. Yesterday, the Secretary of Defense, after the Israelis took out a guy who'd killed hundreds, who'd killed dozens and dozens of Americans in 1983 yes. in our embassy in Beirut, who we'd been looking for for decades and had a $7 million bounty on, they took him out. And our Secretary of Defense said, hey, slow down, Israelis. Um, you're going to escalate this war. Um, my, my thought would have been, thank you, Israel, for taking down someone who'd taken American lives. Uh, and for yeah. every family who lost a loved one in that bombing, um, this was a justice, an act of justice and rightful vengeance. And so I think this will actually de-escalate because Hezbollah now has to risk its entire organization and infrastructure if it continues the, its efforts to support Iran in this conflict against Israel. You know, you mentioned the way America's put its thumb on the scale, usually telling Israel to pull back. Why is it that this administration, Harris, Biden, seems so hell-bent on accelerating the war in, say, Ukraine, in, in expanding it, widening it, giving more capabilities to the Ukrainians to launch into Russia, but time and time again, pulling Israel back and saying we need to de-escalate their existential fight against Hamas and Hezbollah. Why the difference? You know, frankly, Pete, they've kind of been the same storyline. We've been very slow, right? We restricted the Ukrainians, too. We did provide weapons, but we've provided weapons to the Israelis. What, what this administration gets wrong, I think, in both cases, is it doesn't understand that there is evil in the world, and the only thing that they understand is power and brute force. These guys think, right, you can sit down with Ayatollah. They've been negotiating with them for three and a half years, yeah. giving the Iranians billions of dollars, and then you end up with what we saw now almost a year ago on October 7th. Uh, Americans held hostage by the Iranians in Gaza, dead Americans, 1,200 dead Israelis, and the Red Sea now almost impassable. When you negotiate with evil, when you think you can appease them into peace, you create exactly the conflict we see in the world today. And the risk of escalation because of American weakness, Pete, is enormous today. The next three or four months, while President Biden is nominally in charge, are a really dangerous time period for our country. Nominally in charge, indeed. Uh, when you were Secretary of State, I'm pretty sure everybody knew who was in charge. A very different story. Uh, Mike Pompeo, sir, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Have a good morning. You got it. You too. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.